Hello there everybody, Sam Strings here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to yet another brand new Hornby locomotive review. So, on Saturday I looked at one of Hornby's top models. It was absolutely top of the range, super detailed, but also super expensive. It was of course their brand new Mallard in the Railways range, and if you haven't seen that already, I'll put the link up there somewhere so that you can check it out. Definitely worth looking at because it really was absolutely superb. But today I'm going to be looking at something that is truly at the other end of the spectrum. This one is really, really cheap and cheerful, and I suppose it's more suitable for beginners. Although, as I'm going to sort of try and demonstrate, it's perfect really for just about every Body. It is perfect for beginners though because it is so inexpensive and it makes for a brilliant step up from those much more basic starter set locomotives, so the Pocket Rocket 040s and the 060s. But it's obviously really, really, really good for the more seasoned modelers as well. This model is so inexpensive that you can probably afford to buy one and practice weathering on it and learn to weather using it. Or if you know how to weather, you could buy one of these and weather it up and add more detail and make it look absolutely exquisite. So it's a very versatile model and there's an awful lot you can do with it. So here it is. It is this, the brand new Hornby Class 121 bubble car in the railroad range. Now this isn't a brand new tooled model, or at least I don't think so. I'm pretty sure that Hornby did release this uh, in the sort of main range several years ago, but it's been reintroduced into the range for the first time in many years as part of the railroad range. And as I've been saying, it's, well, it's absolutely beautiful, as you can tell, but it's also really inexpensive. You can buy this from Hattons for £56, I think it was. £56. I've seen coaches which cost almost that. So I've put a link in the description. If you want to check these out, please do. They really, really are good for that money. And as we're going to see, fair amount of detail for the price. Obviously, we're not expecting anything incredible, but it's a brilliant model that everybody can enjoy and uh, also this is a good thing I think Hatton's pointed this out on Twitter this is a complete train it is a DMU but they did run as single units so you don't have to buy any rolling stock to go with this you can run it on its own and that's perfectly prototypical so that is actually another really really good cost saving feature uh, so you can get a, a complete train for 56 pounds absolutely astonishing so we're going to look at this today we're going to get this out the brand new or brand new in inverted commas class 121 bubble car uh, in this beautiful BR green. Okay, let's get this out. And I'm really, really pleased with this, I'm not going to lie. Actually, this year I think a bit of my old Hornby fandom is definitely starting to come back to me because they really are starting to look out for everybody, aren't they? Uh, so, even Hornby's price for this is pretty good. It's not quite as good as Hatton's. I think it's £69.99. And again, for a complete train, that does sound like a great price to me. However, I'm not going to go on about the price anymore. I've told you what this cost, and hopefully you're going to see for yourself what good value that is. So, first of all, let's look at the packaging. First thing to note, the Hornby Railroad packaging is now extremely shiny. Look at that. I've forgotten. Well... I don't know if I'd forgotten or whether I've just not seen a shiny one like that, but I don't remember my old Hornby Railroad models being quite as shiny as that. But it makes all the difference, you know, at the basic level, people like shiny things. Well, at least I do. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else is as primitive as that. Anyway, let me show you the end of the box. So this is the R3665 Chiltern Railways Class 121. And then, of course, you've got the running number there, which is 121034. So presumably this is number 34 of the set that was built. Nothing really to see on the box. Uh, obviously nothing on the back there as far as information of the class goes so let's get this out and see what it's like uh, I'm going to open it at this end I think if I can I've opened this end before I've only had this out of the box very briefly just to make sure it works apart from that I'm going to be pretty much uh, looking at this up close for the first time uh, with you guys. So this instruction manual came out, so let's take a look. So this is the instructions for the Class 121 driving motor brake, which is I suppose technically what this is. And on the inside there you can see it is very, very basic. Just a little bit about lubrication, shows you how to remove the body, which is very, very nice. Some manufacturers don't do that, as we found out last week. And then also a little bit about DCC ready, which is nice. You can put a decoder in here nice and easily. And also there's a section about body reassembly, which is really really handy because often getting the body off is not the trouble it's getting it back on again that can be a bit troublesome so that's great I'm really glad that Hornby have in included that it's not very much in there not an awful lot of information uh, but it does cover the basics and I think what you do get inside there is uh, at least very useful okay so if I flip this over you can see there are no detail packs or anything with this which again is pretty good I mean it's a shame that you don't have anything to fit yourself if you enjoy that sort of thing but otherwise all of the detail is pre-fitted to the model so let's take a look 
look then, let me just peel this back, and it comes in a sheet of plastic here, as you can see, which means that the Loco is nice and protected. And if I lift this out very carefully, I will bring this up close to you so that you can see it. All right, into shot she goes. So, it's a really, really nice looking thing, isn't it? The finish on it is fantastic. Even though it is a relatively cheap model with not too much detail, it does give the impression of quality and also the impression of detail. I mean, all of the underframe there, even though it is just a sort of moulded detail, really does look quite convincing, doesn't it? It's not bad at all for the money. Uh, another thing you can see, if I flip this upside down, is we do have NEM couplings on this model, which is fantastic. You're not just stuck with your standard Hornby huge couplings like some railroad models are. They've actually gone and upgraded this to take NEM couplings, which is fantastic. As you can see, this rear bogey is the non-driven bogey. It does have pickups on it quite clearly, as you can see, but this bogey is not driven, which is fine. And then you've got the driven bogey at this end. And as you can see, we do have a few dreaded traction tires on there, which I don't like too much. And maybe it's not necessary given that this is a single car unit, but obviously it does have the couplings. So I suppose if you wanted to couple something to it, it would be nice if the unit could pull them too. So anyway, there it is, as you can see. I'm gonna show you this in a little bit more detail in just a second, but for now, here's a little bit of history on the Class 121. So, the Class 121 was a set of 26 single-car DMUs introduced to the western region of British Railways in 1960. They carried out light passenger duties on small branch lines and other similarly quiet passenger routes. When British Railways became privatised, Silverlink became the only passenger company to continue to use these bubble cars, and the final two units were retired in May 2017 by Chiltern Railways, which I think is the version that we've got here. However, the 121 isn't completely dead. Several still do exist in various applications, for training purposes, for example, and of course there are also a few used for passenger work still, but on Heritage Railways. So there it is then, up against the white background, the very lovely Hornby Class 121. And I've got to be honest with you, I absolutely love this. Now generally, I'm not much of a diesel fan. I would usually take a steamer over a diesel any old day. But for some reason, there's just something about this model which I just really, really like. It just does it for me. I'm not too sure why. So, this model is cheap and cheerful, there's no doubt about it. However, just to look at it, you wouldn't really know it, would you? I mean, it really is quite a nice, smart thing, and I just love the BR green. Actually, these days, I think I prefer this BR green to the blue, at least on a DMU. So let's take a look at the paintwork then, because as always from Hornby, it's been done to a very, very high standard. You can see that the lining on the side of the bodywork here, just uh, below and above the windows there, has been done to a high standard. No smudging or anything like that, and that's exactly as you'd expect from Hornby. You've got the British Railways crest just in the centre there, which again is very, very nicely applied. And then on the end there, we've got W55034, which of course is the running number. And the W there indicates that this is a Western Region DMU, as we know. And then if you take a look on the top, you've got most of the roof work here been done in the darker grey, but then the top of the cabs here has been done in a much more sort of creamy colour, I would say slightly off white, which is quite nice. And then on the ends there, you can see the livery is pretty much similar, except at lower down there, you've got the yellow paint there around the headlights. The headlights unfortunately on this are just dummies which is probably what you'd expect for a model that costs this much. Although again if you wanted a project you could probably upgrade those to be LED lights but uh, for me I think they will do just fine. Not the most convincing thing I've ever seen but they're not too bad. And then of course below there you've got the buffer beam which does have the coupling hook fitted to it and you've also got some I would say fairly convincing looking buffers except of course they're not sprung or anything like that so that's fair enough. So let's take a look at some of the details then it is worth pointing out here that these headboards are left completely blank now it's a little bit of a shame that there's nothing on those I'm not an expert but I think there should be a number or you know a destination on there however I think Hornby have probably done the right thing by leaving those blank and I will try to explain why I think that so if you think Beginners aren't really going to care, are they? In fact, a lot of beginners might not even realise that there's supposed to be something there, if indeed that is the case. So I don't think that's a big deal. But also the seasoned modellers, you know, people who are buying this to run on a layout in a serious manner, probably won't appreciate having their minds made up for them like that. And I suppose a more expensive model might include stickers or something like that so that you can apply your own number. No such thing with this, but at least they're left blank so that modelers can add those at their discretion if they want to. So I think that's fair enough. And again, it's probably a feature that will save a little bit of cost as well, so that's okay. On the other end here, you can see there are exhausts, which I think must be separately fitted, mustn't they? They really do look like they've been added on. So that's quite nice. Quite a well-known feature of the Class 121 and other similar DMUs to have the exhaust at one end there, which is quite cool. 
The underframe detail I've already mentioned, even though I think it is just part of the moulding of the chassis, it's not part of the body, it is the chassis. You can see that the pipes here on the left hand side are fully detached from the body, they've got that really really nice 3D effect. So really they might as well be separately fitted for how effective they look. So let's take a look at the interior then, as you can see we do have a full set of seats inside there, which again is a great feature for a model that was so inexpensive. I was half expecting it just to be an empty interior, but no it really isn't. They are all blue, which is perhaps a little bit strange. I don't think I've ever seen a 1-2-1, so I don't know whether that's the case in real life. But yes, that struck me as being a little bit odd, but I'm not criticising there because uh, for all I know that might be prototypical. And then if we take a look inside the cams, you can see that there is even a bit of cab detail inside there, which for the price, once again, is absolutely astonishing. So yes, that's what I think. I just think this is fantastic value for money. The detail does what it needs to do. It's not outstanding, but who was expecting it to be for the price? For less than £60, this is an absolute steal. So all there is to do now really is to get her onto the track and see if performance meets with expectations. And I think you'll be quite pleased with this. So let's get this down to the track and we'll see how she goes. Okay, so there she is then down onto the track, and yes, once again, absolutely fantastic. I really do love this one. Uh, thoroughly enjoying looking at her today. Right, so I have just been trying her with some coaches. I'm not going to show her with coaches in the video because I think I might get lynched. Obviously, these are supposed to just be running on their own. But I did run her with some coaches purely just to test whether she had any decent pulling power for the ratings. And yes, she managed quite a few coaches. I think we got her up to five, something like that. So it's not too bad, not astonishingly good. Quite a bit of wheel slip with five coaches but she managed it nonetheless anyway she's going to be running just on her own today and for now let's get her a little bit of juice on the power supply and see how she does at those slow speeds so let me just click this on the hm2000 here and give her a little bit more come on as you can see she is just starting to ease forwards there and as i'm sure you'll agree that is just absolutely crazy good slow speed this is a model that cost me less than 60 pounds to buy and just look at how smoothly she is running at that slow speed. Let's try the other way just to see if she'll do it just as well. Backwards. I'm going to say backwards. I'm not sure really what's the front. I'm going to pick this end to be the front because it's got the, the cab. And speed her up. As you can see, it's still nice and smooth, even slightly faster. So the performance is really, really fantastic. It is a shame that she's got a traction tyre. But uh, with only two driven axles, I suppose that is necessary. So, anyway, there we go. The 121 is a fantastically good runner. Really, really good. Uh, let's get her off then. There she goes, and I'll show you what else is on the line. So, on the inside line, I have another single car DMU going to run for you. Now, you'll have to forgive me if I get any of these names wrong, because I'm not very good with uh, DMU names. But I think this is the 128, something like that. It's a parcels DMU, so not really for passengers. Uh, that's a Helgen one, and very, very nice it is too, as you can see. So she's going to be running, there we go. And then finally on the inside line, yet another DMU. This one isn't just a single car though, this has got uh, three units on it. Let me bring this in. It is, I think, the 101. I always get this mixed up with the 110, but I think this is the 101, as you can see in the blue and grey, which I really like. So enjoy the running session and see which other DMUs you can spot, and there is an odd one out. So there she goes. And I don't know how they've managed it, but this it's just got character, hasn't it? Really, really nice. So she's taking a slightly different route around the room today, so uh, let me show you that. And she's actually so sure-footed on the points and things that I can do this. So she's going up these points here, so she passes quite close to the church, past the country station. Then down here, past the turntable, as you can see. And then she keeps coming round, round and round and round. Back onto the main line, just there. So here are some of my ratings then for the brand new Hornby Class 121 in the railroad range. Detail, I've given this 3 out of 5. I think that might even be a little bit too harsh. She might even be deserving of a 4, but I've been on the safe side and given it a 3. I also forgot to mention that the 
other cab that I didn't show actually doesn't have any detail unfortunately. That area is taken up entirely by the mechanism which is a little bit of a shame but I suppose it is necessary. Similarly power 3 out of 5, I have to admit she doesn't pull a lot, I haven't really demonstrated her pulling power in this video because it's not necessary, she's not supposed to really pull very much. So even though she's not a mighty puller it really doesn't matter so don't pay too much attention to that but obviously it's my rating system so I've got to include that. However the slow speed as you saw was absolutely astonishingly good so I've got to give that a 5 out of 5. Again the quality is just superb, it's also solidly built. Most of the detail is just moulded onto the bodywork so it's not something that's going to be dropping to pieces in your hands which is a big thumbs up. And finally then value even for the Hornby price of £69.99 that is super super good value for what you get. The Hatton's price is even better of course, £56, go and get one if you fancy one because I expect these are going to sell out pretty quick for that price. Uh, yeah, really can't recommend it highly enough, so 5 out of 5 there. Overall then that is 8.34 out of 10 which I believe will get her into the top 10. There she goes into the ranking then, yes, ninth, just above the Crab and below the D11. Now realistically the Crab and the D11 are much, much, much better models than these, of course they are. However, the value for money on this really, really drags it up, so much so that it's in the top 10. 10, and I think it does deserve it for that reason. This 128 is always a really nice slow runner. Yeah, I ought to run her a little bit more often really because she is just so nice and smooth. So there you go then folks, what a beauty she is, really really great value and again if you want to pick one of these up there is a link in the description for you just there. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, I do hope you enjoyed that as much as I did, yes I uh, do like these little one car DMUs, absolutely fantastic. Thanks for your company folks, hope you enjoyed that, if you would like to leave the video a like or even a comment that would be very very generous of you. But for now, thanks for watching once again and I will see you next time. Alright, cheers everybody.